the reason I'm talking like that is that let's take a look at that experienced GM that you're kind of have in your mind. That experienced GM, are you saying, would massage the situation so that that never happened? Is that what the experienced GM would do? That somehow they were just so good mm -hmm. at narrating the failures and, you know, coming up with the coincidences along the way so that we would make our way through the adventure more or less aesthetically, at least, as that person yeah. finds most satisfying and that we thinks will be the most entertaining. Is that the experience mm -hmm. you're talking about? Well, that when you describe like that, it almost sounds kind of railroady. It's more than kind of. That yeah. is railroading. That's what railroading is. Well, it's, certainly, it's a, it's a yeah, soft I, I railroad don't, I because guess. you're tap dancing in front of the players, right? You're tap dancing in front of what they do, right? So that it looks like whatever they do, like takes them, you know, through the adventure, right? Um, yeah. And, but go on. So is that really? Yeah. Uh, I, I guess. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to have to head out. Oh, okay. I've got my, All I right. think my work crew is here, but I'll um, continue on with the conversation, okay. but uh, I'll, I will see you all later. Take care, Robbie. See you. Robbie, good talking with you again. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm asking kind of brutal questions in some way, but well, there's, but there's a method in my madness. And that's, no, I get that. And that, yeah. <laughs> the, well, the idea here is that I'm trying to relieve you of the pressure that leads people to do that. People do that because they don't want to, quote, oh, I don't know, lose control of the story, right? They don't want to, right. they want to provide the best story. They want to, um, you know, make sure it's fun for everyone, right? All these kind of platitudes. Mm -hmm. Now, what that's kind of interesting is that and, and this is a game where sudden death can happen, but it's not quite as likely as in some other games. So it's more likely, if we're talking about failures and stuff, that we're talking about being badly lost and, and or at the mercy of people who you know, are more comfortable in this territory that it's more likely that we might end up with like a bad bounce on a ceremony roll and we got some really bad advice that day. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> um, right. And so the game has a way of providing for things to go pretty badly wrong in ways that aren't just sudden death. Oh, your skull's split by a critical, right? I mean, I'm saying that the game has right. ways of making things go strangely and desperately. And that in this game, it may be interesting to give up that idea of the expert GM who can always, you know, dance through the raindrops and lead you through, you know, Absolutely. there and back. And we went in, we fought some things, we got some treasure, and we went back out again. That's going to happen. Don't worry. He's got you. Right, he's by either subtle means or unsubtle means, like Mordak, poof, right? Um, yeah. So let's lose that skill entirely. What good is that skill when you have characters like these and situations like right. the one we're in? Why don't we go into it and get where we get? And that's just the new normal, the new situation. Right? Who knows? I mean, the, the, playing without that safety net, what does that feel like to you or look like to you from where you sit right now? Well, I, I feel like this is kind of a new grounds. Well, it is definitely for me anyway, but uh, I feel like it's uh, it does offer a, it's almost It's a lot more collaborative. Um, All of us are constrained by the dice, then, aren't we? All of us yeah. obey the dice. Well, dice speak, and the game's kind of nice in that I thought the game's text for how to narrate specific outcomes 
actually really gives the GM some pretty good advice. You're supposed to be creative. You're supposed to use what's happening in a logical way without having to be forced. You know, you don't roll on a table and say, oh, he trips you. You say, oh, it's a halberd and he, you know, he hit and he didn't do much damage. You know what? I think he tripped you. I think you're on your back. This game allows <laughs> you to do that, right? Yeah. And it gives pretty good advice for that. So in a way, you're not, you have to be ready for it, but you don't have to feel like the dice screwed you as the GM. Oh my God, how am I going to narrate that? You know, what's that going to mean? I don't know what to do with that. The game actually says, you got this. There's a whole situation going on. There's all these people. There's all these objects. There's all these beasts. There's all this history. You can take that failure or that success and you can do something with it. You can do it. Mm. Right? And so the, the game actually has, that's why I say it's a good game. It actually allows you to trust the dice and not have to battle the dice your way through the adventure you think everyone is supposed to have. Right. That's scientifically formulated. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it, if I, if you, you have all those modules just like I do. Right. I mean, when the yeah. player characters, you know, <laughs> if they, if they fail their scan check for the ring, then the servant girl finds the ring and gives it to them. No, yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. What am I, two? <laughs> so, fuck your ring. You know, I don't want the ring. My character doesn't right, want the right. ring. My character gives the ring <laughs> to the servant girl. She deserves it better than I do. Screw your ring. And he's if like, I no, not the ring. Exactly. You need that ring for the third and three adventure three your times. That ring's going to, you know, you need that ring. And I'm giving you, like, fuck your ring. You know, who's playing, who's playing a character? Me or you? Yeah. Right? Right. And so I think that's the way my sessions had actually gone before. Oh yes, <laughs> was, was kind of I know what you want me to do, and I'm not going to do it. Right. Well, I'm not necessarily doing that just to be a pain to grief the GM, but I know people who do it, and I think I see what you mean mm -hmm. because it's patronizing, it's annoying. Yeah. Why are we following? If I want to, you know, there, there there are plenty of much better written movies than this one. I can go watch those. <laughs> And so, you know, it's, 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 there's no point to this. And that's why I don't play Call of Cthulhu scenarios. It's why I don't play second edition D&D scenarios. It's why I don't play White Wolf scenarios. They're all like that. Shadowrun yeah. scenarios, yeah. for God's sake, they're all the same. I mean, I knew a guy who told me that when they played Shadowrun, which they played a ton of, that... He they would go into like the court, they were mercenaries, they'd be hired by this guy in a corporation, right? And then they'd be sent off on a mission. And he was so sick of the fact they'd be sent off, they'd be hired for some mission, they go to the mission, but of course, the corporate exec was working off the books and is going to engineer their deaths, you know, to betray them, right? In the course of the mission. And they just been through this shit so many times to be like, the guy starts to tell you your mission. He's like, I blow his head off. And the GM's like, what, what? You can't do that. What, what? And he's like, look, I don't like him. He looks like he's going to betray us. <laughs> you know, and, and granted that's sort of passive aggressive in a lot of ways, but the point is that you can see the player's irritation that nobody's being done any favors by GMing like that. Are they? That's, yeah. That's so exactly what's the right. alternative? What's the alternative? Is it all chaos? Is it all suddenly thrown into chaos and it'll be incoherent and, you know, player characters may die and this is going to be, well, who wants to do this? It's just, it's just a meat grinder. We're going to just throw them in there and everybody, it's going to be awful if we don't know how to manage the plot. And yet, I've found that the opposite is the case. I've found the opposite is yeah. the case, is that players, once they realize that they're not being treated like their babies, will actually play their characters as being interested in the people around them and interested in their own backstories and interested in their priorities. And you don't know where those relationships and priorities are going to go. 
And it's kind of interesting. All of a sudden, your tropes, you know, oh, well, there's the amnesic, beautiful mutant child that you've released from the tank. And, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, give me another science fiction trope. Great. Just what I wanted, you know. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's like I don't – what do we what do we do here if it's not just about finding the next trope? What what will we what will we create? What good ideas do you have instead of that crap you're reading in that module? Right? What circumstances <laughs> well, and, can you come up with that we you don't know how they're going to turn out? And, and I will say that just during play, during our, our sessions. It was very inspiring. Things would happen. I mean, with all of us working creatively on a on a subconscious level, I guess I, I maybe intuitive is maybe a good pop word. up. Yeah, uh huh. It yeah. it pops up, and it's like now from the gym's perspective, definitely I saw wonderful ideas for things that we could do, and and not even just side quests, but like additions and things to add to what we were doing it just i mean it really i mean i i didn't feel comfortable always you know jumping onto it right you know latching in you know but i mean it was there yeah there's some interesting and, 